1000 miles on one charge that's a pretty big promise and it is coming from a new electric car company by new i actually mean a 10 year old electric car company it 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 it, it made a lot of a lot of waves uh, back in the day, it's called Abterra. As a matter of fact, I have never heard of this company before. It was that 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 so many years ago. Uh, and that's why I'm happy that Tom Malogny of Inside the Visa is gonna be here because he used to be a huge fan. As a matter of fact, he almost he, he tried putting a deposit down on this car, uh, but then uh, you know something happened, and he'll 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 walk us through what happened and how they're resurrecting this company now. But it's kind of like you know how people are excited to finding like the old change between the cushions of their couch. Well, this is kind of like we're finding an old electric car between the cushions, except for now these guys are saying, and it's these are the it looks like the original owners are going to revamp this company. They're saying with this new technology, they are going to be able to get this car going to a thousand miles per one charge. All right. Uh, we're going to bring Tom uh, here. He, he'll give us the, the whole 411 on this. And I'm going to ask him some questions because I don't even know the answers to half of them. So uh, let's uh, let's get going with this right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. I wonder if it was YouTube. <laughs> Barely it was YouTube when, when uh, this company uh, started. Now, this is a newer drawing, and I'll, see, I'll show you the uh, previous version of the car. It's really actually not that different. And, uh, you know, they are just starting out uh, again, and uh, their website is just kind of there. It's collecting uh, the, uh, the, the investment. I, should, I shouldn't say donation, investment. I'm collecting donations on Patreon. They're collecting investment on their website. So check it out. Um, and uh, just like I mentioned, uh, this is Saturday. So uh, Tom Alogny is going to be here uh, to talk about it. And I'm not at all surprised because whenever you need to uh, get some uh, facts, um, some history and perspective, no better than Tom to be here and explain this to uh, to everyone. And I gotta tell you, I, we usually try not to talk before the before the show because we kind of wanted to have a fluid conversation. But uh, we talked a little bit because I, you know, I I wanted to know what's going on just besides all of these articles that I'm seeing in the last couple of days. And he knows a lot more than I've seen in articles. So this is gonna be a real treat. Uh, before that, of course, a quick reminder that. Um, this video and this channel is sponsored by Byte and check out their all electric SUV called Ambyte coming to the US and Europe in about a year or so. Um starting at only $45,000. That's before the incentives. So uh, don't forget to reserve yours. And the best part, it only takes 60 seconds to reserve yours, but mainly because you don't have to put the deposit down. So join myself and over 50,000 other people who've done that. Link in the description of this video. All right, so uh, without further ado, let me bring Tom in here and get the 411 on this very interesting project. Tom, welcome to the show again. Hey, Alex, good to see you. All right, so, you know, when you told me this morning that this is the topic you wanted to pick, this was not even on my radar, right? Like, at all. so then I Googled this and uh, I was like, whoa, there's tons of articles of people completely geeking out over this. Um, you know, so the, the name is Aptera. And um, why don't you take it from here and tell us the history, why it was exciting back then, and why it is exciting now that they're actually trying to resurrect this project? Sure. So before we start, so have you, do you know what an Aptera stands for? You know what? I, I think I read it. It's like a bird without wings. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah, so okay. if you take a, take a look at their vehicle, it kind of looks like an airplane, right? But without wings. Yeah. So I, I guess that was the inspiration for the name. Um, but in any event, yeah, I'm one of the uh, old timers with uh, an electric car history, I guess, that uh, is, are kind of geeking out over the fact that Aptera maybe looks like they're coming back. I noticed other people like John Volker of Green Car Reports, Sebastian Blanco, um, they're both tweeting and writing about it. And um, there are a couple of the people that were been writing about electric cars since, you know, 2008, 2009, kind of before this whole new wave of electric cars really took off. So um, back in, I'd say 2007, I think, was probably when I first heard about Aptera. I was doing some research online. I wanted an electric car, but there were none back there. You couldn't even get a Tesla in 2007. So 
it was all these upstart car companies. It was Aptera. There was a car company called Phoenix Motors that was going to come out with a, a an all-electric pickup truck. Uh, there was Coda that actually ended up making a few vehicles before they went out of business. Uh, but this Aptera really caught my eye. I just thought it looked so cool that I wanted one. And I tried to place a deposit for one in 2008 or 2009, and they wouldn't take it because I lived in New Jersey. and They were only taking deposits for California residents. The plan was that they wanted to launch the vehicle in California where they're located. And I guess for the first year or so, work out any potential problems or kinks and then begin to do um, na nationwide sales. Uh, so um, I, I was never able to put down a deposit. Uh, from what I understand, all the deposit holders did get their money back. Um, I believe nobody got beat. They, they did refund the, the, the deposit holders money. So um, what happened was uh, they basically just ran out of money. Um, one of the things that really was a huge hit for the company was in 2010, there was the Progressive um, Automotive X Prize competitions. And going into it, they were one of the favorites. And there was a $10 million prize for the winner. And they pulled up in this like polished car that looked like it was ready to go. And most of the competitors were these tiny little companies that like, you know, you could see like screws in the side of the vehicles where like they like home built them. And it really looked like Aptera was going to run away with this and get the $10 million prize. And they were on their way to production. And what happened was they performed terribly in this X prize competition. I think during one of the, the slalom events, the door like accident, the door latch unhinged and opened up and the, the driver almost fell out of the vehicle and it like swerved and it was all on video and it looked, it just looked terrible. And needless to say, they lost the competition. Uh, investors got scared. They didn't get the $10 million. And less than a year later, they were bankrupt and they closed up shop. Um, but now uh, what's happening is I think it's three of the original partners, the owners, gotten together and said that they want to relaunch it. And, um, uh, you know, the, the, what, one of the advantages are now of being able to relaunch it was you got to remember back then, 2006, 2007, 2008, there were no components available for electric vehicles. They had to build everything in-house, even the charge port and the connector. The J1772 connector, which, which we all use now, except for Tesla, um, wasn't even in invented yet. I mean, the SAE may have been working on it, but it wasn't available yet. So they had to make their own connector, their own charge port, all the components, tremendous amount of money in, in, in development. Today, it's a different story, 12 years later. Uh, electric vehicles are, are starting to really take off. All these manufacturers now are making components for them. Aptera can basically source most of the parts out. The, the, they're already existing. And that's going to dramatically reduce the cost of what this will take to bring to market. And secondly, and more importantly, is the batteries. You know, back then in 2008, 2009, you know, the lithium-ion batteries were like, a thousand dollars per kilowatt hour. It was it was crazy. I mean, now we're 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 down under two hundred. So think of the cost of the battery, what it would have cost them for the battery back then compared to now. And that's why they're saying that you know oh, they can do a thousand miles per charge. Now, personally, I'm not too um, tied up in that claim, the thousand miles per charge claim. They'd need a hundred kilowatt hour battery to do that because. Um, it's an incredibly efficient vehicle. I mean, you think the Teslas that have 100 kilowatt hour batteries can go like 300 miles, 320 miles per charge. This thing would go three times as far as a Tesla because it, it's extremely lightweight and very aerodynamic. The original Aptera 2E, um, the prototype had a drag coefficient of like 0.11 which is just ridiculous off the charts. Not sure exactly what the production version was going to have. It was going to be a little higher, but these, these are very lightweight, extremely efficient vehicles. Um, but personally, getting back to the thousand mile range, 
I don't think that if this ever actually makes it to production and they've got a long way to go, um, they're going to have a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, and then up to 100 kilowatt hours. I don't think too many people would spend the extra money for the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack because the, the, fo- the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack would take it over 400 miles per charge. And do you really need more than that? Uh, it's so efficient that you know you could charge it with a regular 120 volt um, charging source and still get like 100 miles of range overnight charging. So you know the as far as the thousand mile uh, charge claim, I think that was something to catch the news and get everybody's uh, attention. But I think if this ever does make it to production, Alex, more than likely, more of the vehicles sold will be the ones with the smaller battery packs because it'll cost a lot less and it'll be more efficient because it's lighter. Okay. Now, first of all, this is fascinating. This is very interesting. And and, and uh, just hearing it, I mean, some of the things I'm actually hearing for the first time, um, definitely, uh, definitely an awesome story. But I have some questions. And... Um, you know, first of all, um, why are you excited about this? Because I mean, let, let's 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 talk about some of the things that I have an issue with. It's a three-wheel vehicle, first of all. Mm-hmm. Secondly, it looks like a car that was designed in 1990s, right? It's 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 kind of an old school, you know, awkward looking vehicle that I'm not really sure if it's practical in terms of the you know being in the garage and all of that stuff. You know. I understand how this could be an exotic thing to drive around uh, maybe a small town or whatever and then and, and take it to some events, but is this really something that could be mass produced? And, and because the new version, and I'm going to show some slides here, the new version doesn't really uh, look um, that different, right? It still looks like a little uh, bird. And I love the insides, by the way, don't get me wrong. The insides are awesome and basically looks like a you know, a little Tesla slash Prius inside. Uh, I, I like that. And here's the tail of it, if you will, since it's a bird without the wings. But, um, you know, I, what are you going to do with this? <laughs> you know, so tell us, why are you so, so excited about this? Well, probably two reasons. The first reason is because the Aptera has a special place in my personal heart. Because like I said, back you know, 12, 13 years ago when I was researching, when I was trying to buy an electric car, the Aptera was like, like this was going to be it. This was the car that I was going to actually be able to buy. Because at that time, honestly, I didn't know if any of the major OEMs were ever going to make an electric car. Nobody had promised anything. There were some rumors that GM might make a plug-in hybrid, which ended up being the Volt. But there, there was nothing you know, really officially committed and, 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 and in the works. So that's number one, because, you know, I, I really, for a couple of years, I followed this company. I was going to buy one. I was excited. And so now it's fun for me to see it being revived. That's number one. Number two, more practical reasons. Um, what I'm excited about is that there's a uh, hope that somebody's going to bring an ultra lightweight, super efficient vehicle to market. Uh, you know, the, the, all the, the electric vehicles that are available there to, out there today are very heavy vehicles, and most of them are not that efficient. Uh, most of the manufacturers really aren't making an effort to make the car extremely efficient. Tesla does. Tesla's secret sauce, whatever it is, is fantastic. My Model 3 gets over four miles per kilowatt hour, which is tremendous for a car of that size and that weight. Uh, but you look at the, all the other electric vehicles out there, they're like, you know, energy hogs. They really don't, aren't that efficient. Now, Hyundai has some, some, some good efficiency numbers. A uh, BMW is the only manufacturer that actually made an effort to design a car from the ground up with being lightweight as one of its main focuses. They, they use a lot of carbon fiber, a lot of aluminum, and BMW actually made a real effort to make the car lightweight. And even at that, like my i3 weighs less than 3,000 pounds, around 27, 2,800 pounds. Uh, that's one of the lightest electric cars on the market today. Uh, my Tesla weighs, I think, 4,000 pounds. The, this Aptera will weigh 1,800 pounds. 
So it's, it's less than half the weight of a Model 3. And I do believe that in the future, uh, we're going to see vehicles like this, ultra lightweight, ultra efficient people movers are going to be in service. Uh, we're just not at that point where the manufacturers are focusing on them yet. So I'd love to see a manufacturer, whether it's Aptera or somebody else, get a vehicle to market that's ultra lightweight. Of course, it has to be safe, but we can engineer very lightweight cars to, to, to have great uh, crash worthiness. So I'm not worried about the fact that it's, it's a lightweight car and it wouldn't be safe. They, if it's engineered properly, it'll be safe. Um, but I'm looking forward to the day where we have options ultra lightweight, ultra efficient electric options. Okay. So essentially you, you, you like this, uh, you like this car uh, for the reasons why a lot of uh, baby boomers like the, uh, the new bug or the new Volkswagen buzz that's, that's been uh, uh, sort of shown around by, by Volkswagen, which is fair enough, but okay. But more, for, more for, of a practical thing. Okay. If, if they're going to actually be able to design this and, and put the right battery in it, and why not add a wheel? Right. I mean, if they're starting from scratch, why not an add an extra wheel, make it the real four uh, four wheel car and, and move forward with that? Why? Why are they, do you think they're sticking with with the three wheel uh, concept? Probably because the fact that when when you add that fourth wheel, then it is classified as a car. And then you have to go through tons of more testing and, and approvals than you do. This is, is classified as, it's like in the motorcycle class. And there's a lot less stringent uh, testing and, and R&D that needs to go into it. So um, basically, I believe that that's why that they would want to keep this uh, a three-wheel vehicle uh, so that it doesn't get the automobile classification. Um, there's a reason why so few automobile manufacturers actually make it, Alex, because it takes billions of dollars to put a car on the road. Yeah, It doesn't take that much to put a motorcycle on the road. And if it's classified as a motorcycle, they can get it on the road without having to raise billions of dollars. Fair enough. And so, but what do you think the, the reasonable price for this should be uh, in, in American do dollars? So I saw that the st their, their target starting price is 34000 Oof. Well, Ugh, that is, you know, that, that, that's a little high. I, I, I agree. But take the federal tax credit into consideration, take local incentives. You know, in California, it's 10,000 off with the federal tax credit and the and, and the state rebate. So now you're looking at 24,000. Do right. you still go oof with 24,000? Yeah. Well, the reason I wait, well, because I actually thought that maybe this car or, or, or this half car, half bird, uh, maybe it's not necessarily for maybe United States. Maybe it's more for like a country like India, where they they really want to have electric cars, and and but they just don't have you know money. That you know people don't have enough money for a manufacturer like Tesla or whatever come come in and and build the infrastructure and so forth. But a, a three wheel vehicle uh, that would actually make more sense. But I was just hoping you would say like. 10, 15,000, because that would actually play well with uh, with Indian market, some of the Asian markets, maybe even some of the, you know, poorer countries in uh, in in Europe, maybe South America, you know what I mean? Where it's still electric, I, it's still cool, but people can afford it. I saying. It's probably not the best fit for Indian market or Indian roads, because it's actually a very wide vehicle. Um, because you see those two front wheels extrude out extend out beyond the, the body. Uh, it's actually two inches wider than a Model S. And, um, you know, that, that some of the foreign markets, um, the, they have very narrow streets. Uh, it, 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 they need small, tiny little cars. Uh, this probably wouldn't play well in, in, in a lot of areas because the front has such a wide track for stability. Um, that uh, it might not work well in some of the other markets. They're they're, they're designing this for the U.S. Uh, I'm sure they would hope to be able to eventually sell it in Europe also. But I think they're really looking at California as their as their prime market. Um, probably California, probably the warm markets like Florida, um, maybe Texas. 
Uh, I'm not sure how well this would perform in the cold weather with the three wheels um, on icy and snow conditions. I don't know how well, um, you know, just how well uh, the whole body would hold up in sub-zero temperatures as far as, you know, how, how warm it would be inside and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that they're, they're really um, focusing on the warmer climate U.S. markets for this. All right. Well, now that you stomped on all of my hopes for this, but OK, so let's talk about the OK, I get it, a warm, warm climates and everything. But do you think this is just going to be like a weekend driving around to a picnic, uh, you know, in a neighborhood kind of car? Because obviously you, you can only put an extra portion there. You can't take your kids anywhere and so forth. What would be the, you know, especially, you know, for someone who can afford a thirty five thousand dollar cool bike like what 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 kind of target audience do you think they'll have and what do you think the numbers as far as mass production would be for this well you know it's it's hard to guess with the numbers i think they said that by 20 the the, the if all if everything goes perfect they would begin production in 2022 and i think they said they were looking for an initial um uh, manufacturing rate of 10,000 units for the first year or two so, um, you know, this isn't going to they're they're not looking at model three sales numbers. Uh, you know, they're there. It would be a niche vehicle for sure. But um, I do think that if this was to come to market and uh, they proved that it was a safe vehicle and, and you know, that the, that uh, it, it hit the numbers that they're saying, you know, it can go, uh, say, 400 miles per charge with the 40 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, start off at thirty-four thousand dollars. I think that they'll find enough people to buy them. I really do. I think people think it's a cool vehicle. It's a great commuter vehicle. It's extraordinarily inexpensive to operate. It gets ten miles per kilowatt hour. <laughs> think about that. You know, that's no, like that's, you know, three times impressive. as much as the average electric car today. And electric cars are already to begin with cheap to operate. So you know, you're talking about you know. A penny or two per mile, uh, you know, su super, super cheap to, to operate. I could see these things cruising up and down the California freeways uh, in the, uh, yeah, you yeah, know, the, uh, the commuter lanes, uh, you know, the HOV lanes. You can't see people take hopping in these things and uh, using them as a commuter car. No, no, I got to tell you, I, I'm thinking like if this car can be proven or motorcycle can be proven safe right like i live in sacramento i literally drive even though i drive a lot like i go to a bunch of places my total commute per day is still 30 miles that's why i don't use gas in my vault when i drive around here um i can see myself driving this because you know this showcases the cool electric technology mm -hmm. i like that and honestly i don't really go on freeways that much anyway and i would be comfortable going on the freeway in this car so you know uh, if if i can apply all of the incentives and california incentives and federal and get this car for uh, for about twenty five thousand, i can see myself getting in 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 there and i think if if it's just a ten thousand uh unit per year run uh, you know, I, yeah, I can see that. I'm, you know, How let's see if they can do it. Company cars to get like attraction, putting a wrap on it, you know, with your company logo, you know, when the, if these things do make it to production, if this thing's driving down the road, you, you're not going to be able to help but look at it, you know? So um, I could see, I could see companies use them as company cars and just, uh, you know, commuters and just people that want, something cool like the you know a lot of people like to be looked at you know and that's why a lot of people buy expensive sports yeah. cars and whatnot um because they know people look at them in it yeah and, I, uh, I would wrap it in pink on top of that to match my uh fitbit so i i already have it all planned <laughs> out so all right well listen uh this is a great story i'm definitely going to keep my eye on it let's see how many people decide to invest in the car i mean it sounds like they're, they're they want to start going on uh, by the end of the year so maybe we'll see them um at ces in vegas you know i will definitely try to make contact and uh you know thanks for the history lesson here i think if anything this is a, just a cool story for our community so thank you for that and uh as always tell us uh where we can find you and where people can follow you um on social media sure so on twitter follow me at tomalog and of course you can hop over to inside evs and uh read my articles there
Yeah, and also that all of that information is in the description of uh, this video. We we have a list of Tom's articles, and of course, uh, you got you got to follow him. All it's just if anything for entertainment purposes, definitely follow Tom on Twitter, and you can see. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm waving in the wrong direction. Uh, Tom Alok, his uh, his handle is uh, right okay. underneath there. That's right. Um, all right. Well, hey, Tom, thanks so much. I appreciate for this. This is this is a fun story that I love to do. But um, all right, I, I guess I will. Uh, I'll see you next week and. Uh, We'll figure out what we're gonna do then, uh, you know, and and maybe maybe you know I, I love how we pick very unique topics, so I'm looking forward to see what what else uh, we can talk about that no nobody nobody else talks about. So thank you for that, and I'll see you next week. See you next week, Alex. Thanks. All right, always great to have Tom here, uh, and uh, yeah, I gotta tell you, I didn't. I, this was. Fun video for me to do because I basically just got educated on <laughs> on on so many cool things about this uh, about this uh, company. I I never thought there was a anything going on before uh, Tesla and Leaf, uh, you know, except for the GM project that we all know about. So yeah, no, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you know I'm gonna make contact with this company and see maybe we can uh, we we can uh, make a connection and I'll follow the story with them uh, uh, and with you guys together. And you know, especially if they're gonna create a prototype and come to one of those shows definitely that would be awesome uh, now don't forget about our own project that i've been running for a while it's uh, called a feeder youtuber only for five dollars a month you can provide shelter water and video equipment and sometimes tickets to a frankfurt auto show maybe it's coming up in a couple of weeks also you can watch me live which is another perk so i appreciate all of my patreons uh, participating in that and somehow if you don't have five dollars because you maybe you invested into the um, new Amterra, who knows? Um, I still have something cool for you that's uh, free of charge, just like um, reserving your Byton. Uh, also in the description of this video, we uh, sign up for our VIP list where we send you bonus articles at the end of each uh, week. Um, so there's one coming pretty much in a couple of uh, in uh, well today. If you're watching this video on Saturday, then. If you make sure to sign up because you're going to get it in a few hours. Uh, e4electric.com slash VIP. I don't even know where day it is. We, we tape this a couple of days before sometimes, which is the case today. All right. Well, thanks for watching. It's always fun to have uh, Tom here. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.